incidentally, uh, uh, kind of apropos of nothing, but do you think that Barack Obama would have been elected president if he'd been white? Uh, I don't, again, I, I mean, I, I can't, I, there's, no, there's no way to answer that question. You know, he would be an utterly different politician with an utterly different story. And this was a, this was a campaign, like any campaign, that's largely about personal narrative. Um, so what his personal narrative would look like if he was white would be totally different. Um, all of his experiences would be totally different. So it's impossible. You know, it's, 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 it's impossible to say, just as it would be impossible to say, like, what if John McCain was black or Sarah Palin was male, you know? Got it, got it. I mean, if, if, if you're talking strictly about policy, um, a, a politician whose policies and outlook were identical to Obama's, who was running as a Democrat, he probably would have won. I mean, it would have been, I think, very hard for a Republican to win this campaign. I, or even, even more so, if, if a white Obama was running against uh, a John McCain who was just as, who ran just as incompetent a campaign as McCain did, <laughs> then I think he still would have won. Um, but I think it's sort of, it's impossible, I think, to, to, to figure out what the answer to that question is. Mm-hmm. How have blacks reacted to your interest in their culture? Um, I would say uh, pretty well. Um, I would say I've, you know I've I've never really I've never really had um, any problems doing what I do. The only people who seem to have a problem with it from time to time are white people, because I think that again it has to do with conceptions of, of, of centrality. And when you move from the center toward the margins in terms of privilege, in terms of um, where people like to think the center is located, then they start to freak out a little bit and wonder if it's really where they thought it was. So um, I think that, you know, anybody who sort of navigates in, in black culture with a sense of respect, a sense of the history, an awareness of the tremendous legacies of co-option and exploitation um, is usually welcomed. You know, anybody, I think expectations of, of white people in black art and in black culture are so low, um, there's such an expectation that they'll act like assholes, that anybody who doesn't is welcomed probably more than they should be. Hmm. How did your white peers react to your interest in, in black culture starting in your teens? I, I assume that's when you first became really interested in hip hop. Um, yeah, or even earlier really. Um they were they were the ones who gave me shit about it. <laughs> they were the ones who um wanted to make fun of me or, you know, kind of you know, let me know that, that this was something that they thought was, was strange and weird. Um you know, a lot of kids in junior high who were white called me Man's Black, right, which was like a, a clever nickname. The funny thing is that um, that name, when, you know, some of the, the black kids that I was hanging out with and some of the black mentors I had in high school, when they heard that people called me that or had previously called me that, they thought it was hilarious and they started calling me that. So what started out as kind of a, a derisive nickname and insult became something that, you know, I was sort of uh, being granted as as a symbol of acceptance by this other community. Um, but, you know, I don't think I ever, you know, I, I don't want to, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think that, um, you know, this, this, kind of, this kind of, like, abuse and, and shit was, was pretty minor. Like, I don't want to give the impression that I, you know, suffered greatly at the hands of, uh, you know, my junior high classmates. Um, I was always somebody who, did, well, first of all, didn't really care that much what they thought, but also was sort of, very quickly realized that I was going to be navigating in different worlds, you know. Um, and and more often than anything else, what happened was I was asked to play the role of kind of a cultural translator. Because I think there are a lot of white people, for instance, who are intrigued or fascinated or curious about other cultures, but they don't really want to approach somebody from that culture and ask them. What they will do is approach, you know, this sort of crossover white boy. They, you know, so it's like, I became used to fielding questions from white people about black culture as if I was an expert, which I never sort of claimed to be, you know. And sometimes it would be ridiculous, you know. Adam, why why is the black community so angry? 
like what you should ask, you know, like <laughs> maybe you're angry because you're asking me instead of them, you know. <laughs> That's great. What has been your attitude towards uh, the Jewish tradition over the course of your life? Has it waxed or waned, or what's going on? Um, as a kid, it was not, you know, I wasn't raised religious. I was raised by very secular parents who themselves were the children of very secular parents. So we didn't go to synagogue. Um, my parents sort of out of some vague kind of feeling that I should know something about Judaism sent me to a Jewish Sunday school that met at a junior college. Um, it was sort of clearly sort of the, the, the bare minimum that they could do without feeling, you know, like they had uh, failed me, you know, failed to sort of educate me. Um, I got kicked out of that school because I had this uh, this really sort of overtly racist old teacher who I got into big confrontations with, and eventually um, it came to a head when I sang Living on a Prayer into a Microphone at an all-school assembly instead of the prayer I was supposed to read. Um, and they, you know, <laughs> um, but um, I think, you know, largely, I think because the community I, I was growing up in was, was pretty Jewish, you know, um, I conflated Jewish with white as a kid. And because I was very critical of what whiteness meant, what, what, what sort of the, you know, historical, economic, social, judicial privilege of whiteness meant, I sort of lumped Jews and whites together because most of the white people I knew, in fact, largely were Jewish. So I just sort of didn't really want much to do with either one of those traditions. Um, and it wasn't until I got older, until I got to college, that I started thinking more deeply about what it meant actually to be Jewish, what the, what the you know, unique strains of that tradition looked like, both in terms of religion and culture and ethnicity and also a tradition of progressiveness and social justice. Um, and it was really largely in, in the course of writing The End of the Jews, which took me, you know, I was working on that book probably on and off for six or seven years. Um, and it was really in the course of writing it that I started to think much more sort of deeply and in a more sustained way about Jewishness as it regarded, as, as it pertained to my own family, as it pertained to a literary tradition um, and a group of people navigating in America and, and, you know, all of these other things. Like, you know, how, you know, like, how was I to understand my grandfather? Well, part of understanding him meant understanding that religion and understanding the cultural and, and, and religious milieu that he grew up in. Yeah, you know, so I didn't, you know, I, I really set out to write a book that was about his generation and mine and was a sort of an effort to understand his generation and um, understand mine better in relation to it. And, you know, it, it, it quickly became clear to me, I think, that a big part of that, a big part of him and my grandmother and their generation or, you know, their, their circle in that generation was related to being Jewish, whether or not anybody was actually religious. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that struck me with your book, there's the title, The End of the Jews, and then I read the book, and none of the characters have much of an interest in, in the Jewish tradition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that's true. I mean, I think everybody in the book is relatively secular. Um, I think that they, you know, I think they do have an interest. Um, you know, for me, one of the things that I try to deal with in the book is the ways in which um, identity for pretty much all of these characters is something that is constantly in flux. It's not something that's ever fixed, whether it's religious identity, sexual identity, political identity. Um, and I think that there's a number of times in the book where characters find themselves surprised at the ways that they sort of pick up Jewish identity and wield it, use it as a weapon, and also the ways in which and the times at which they try to distance themselves from it. Um, I think, you know, for, for Tristan, the elder Tristan, the novelist, um, being Jewish is in some ways central to his life and his writing, but in a way that is unique and particular to him and doesn't really have much to do with religion at all. Um, but, you know, as he 
goes through various stages of being accepted and rejected by Jewish readers and by a Jewish community 